Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. It's Sunday. Happy Sunday. Can you tell to the person next to you, happy Sunday? Happy Sunday. And, and one more thing. You are in Midtown. If it's your first time in Midtown, we're not going to ask you to stand up on your feet on the chair and we're going to look at you. No. But what we will do is, can you tell to the person next to you, I'm grateful for you. Take a second. I'm grateful for you. Now, now, if it's your wife, you got to do it, right? If it's your husband, you got to do it. But do it to the person behind you. I'm grateful for you. We're, I'm grateful for you. We're grateful for each other. Great job. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We hope you had a happy Thanksgiving and that you enjoy with the family, you enjoy with friends, that you enjoy with the ones that surround you. Um, and and it's, it's a wonderful opportunity in this week to remember the things that matters, right? We do long trips, we, you know, we travel a lot, or we stay in town, and then we host people, and, and it's just a great opportunity to shine the light of Christ to others. So, I'm not Pastor Carlos, right, but I have to wear a jacket, but I couldn't be without my shoes, okay, so... So we're grateful for each other. We're grateful for the opportunity and the community that we have around. I remember just a year and a half ago, we were driving back from St. Louis, Missouri with my wife, and we were praying, praying for a place where we can come and connect and be engaged with brothers and sisters and just grow and see others grow. And the Lord brought us to Grace Bible Church and he brought us to Grace Bible Church Midtown. And so if it's your first time here, welcome, really welcome. I know I say already welcome like four or five times, but it's just welcome, welcome to Grace Bible Church Midtown. And we've been listening for a few couple of weeks and months, different things that I, I just want to tap, you know, I just want you to constantly remember. We don't come here to listen one thing and then we... We go to another page and we continue living a life. We remember what we have listened and what the Lord has talked to us so we can continue living a life that is worthy for the Lord. We've been listening about, about being local. We like to make words, okay? Spanglish, oof, yes, you know, local, you know. Go to the nations but start here. If you're an international student, if you're international like I am from Guatemala, uh, this is the place, you know, where you can come and feel welcome. But remember, God will call you to the nations. The nations are here. We've been listening about, you know, uh, uh, starting, you know, with our neighbors, with our friends, with our family. And then now we're in Revelation series. And we have a Revelations break, which is great for me. So I don't have to struggle too much, you know. But all that, you know, has, has to be convicting. It has to challenge, challenge our lives in many, many ways. And I'm going to be honest, this morning I don't have a deep theological message. You can take notes, please, please don't start drawing, you know, just, just, just or drawing, not drawing, right? No, don't start drawing, just, you can take notes, but I really want to encourage you. My prayer is that at the end of this time, we can go, and we can be encouraged and go out of those doors and be an unstoppable, with an unstoppable hunger to share with others what the Lord has given us. So be ready, okay? I like cheesy names. So my sermon name is History Makers, okay? Back in Guatemala, we used to have a mission trip. And we call our, our mission trip History Maker in English, yes. It was History Maker in Guatemala, yeah? And so it was Haciendo Su Historia. And this is something that for many years, even though we've been here for years now, and we haven't gone back to Guatemala. Everywhere we go, this stick to me. We're called to make God history. So we're history makers. We're history makers. And that's what we're going to talk a little about today. We're going to talk a little bit about it. So we are finishing the f American football season. And we're starting the football season, right? And we're with the World Cup. And there's this huge debate about soccer and football. We're not going to get into that right now because we know football is life, okay? But... I love something. We always hear about the goat, yeah? And it's not a goat that you see, you know, on a, or you, I don't know, you know, it's not a lamb or anything. It's the best, the greatest of all time. And when you see this picture, you will start identifying, you know, the greatest of all times in their sports, you know? 
um, when, when, we, when we hear these names, we think they are the best of the best. We hear about Cristiano Ronaldo or Leo Messi. We hear about Michael Jordan. We hear about Tiger Woods, Muhammad Ali, Serena Williams, Jesse Owens. Someone will say whoop right now because John David Crow, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting there, you know. Or we talk about Cody Mays leading the word, you know, leading the, leading the worship, you know. Incredible, the greatest of all time right there. We're able to witness that. We love epic moments and great comebacks. We love historical moments. And, we, and that usually define who are the best players in history. And let's, let's just be honest. Yeah? We love to be on the TV and be watching, you know, an important game, maybe something that is going to define a championship, and we're waiting for that clutch, for that last second. Maybe our team is losing, and we're just, come on, it can happen, you know. Kick them, yeah, you know, and we get all excited, you know, and we're waiting for that moment. Probably, we're not going to talk about this season, okay. But do you remember where you were last year for the Alabama game? Oh, you know, I was, I was with David and BJ Fox, and we, and we rushed the field. No, we didn't rush the field, okay? <laughs> but but we, we were there, and that will be forever in our hearts. We will go and we will tell our kids, you know, hey, for this epic game, we were there, and we were here, and, you know, and, it's, and it will stick to us, and it will be something that we will share, and it will be forever, and it's something that is going to excite us, and it's going to, you know, it just, it's just going to keep with us in the Bible. We have people who set an example on how to glorify God. And they had exact moments where they were able to say, to take a position or to do something that will glorify God for the rest of history. And we can look back and see what happened. And that just fuels us to continue because if God was faithful with them, he's going to continue being faithful with us. Amen. And so... I'm very excited and I'm doing slides and everything. So if I start moving stuff, so sorry. Okay, but I want, you, I want you to keep this in mind. And I can't read it there, so I'll read it here. When the world sees things happening through God's people that cannot be explained except that God himself, himself has done them, the world will be drawn to such a God. It's great that we have slides, right? So I don't have to worry about my English, perfect English. But... All of us, all of us have the opportunity to be part of God's history by modeling others his story in our lives. We will have the opportunity of being history makers in our life. Right now, many of us, many of you went back home. And the holidays are usually a little tricky, you know. Either you are very excited that you're going to be with family or you know that you're going to go back with family. And then there are some issues that you have to figure it out. We just spend a week out, you know, and with family and with friends. And, and sometimes we know that we have issues. But right there, we have the opportunity of shine others, to shine to others who Christ is for us. And so through our decisions, the way we show our friends, neighbors, co-workers, our city, our nation, we have the opportunity to show others that there's no other God like our God. So I want you to come with me, not here. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And this says, In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Charles Spurgeon once said, All our action." as well as our thoughts and words should praise him who always blesses us. But I would like to take it a little further, a little further from this statement. Who we are not only should praise him, but should be a public declaration of who God is. I don't hear an amen. But we should, we should, be, we should, we should be thinking on this, you know. Everywhere we go, people should identify us that we belong to God. Now, how many doctors, I mean, here's going to be a lot probably, doctors, you know, or engineers, you know, 
or, or I don't know how many, there's a lot of degrees, I guess. But you know, let's, let's say how many professionals, you know, that are called like doctors or, or anything are in the room. So, so wherever you go, people will name you like Dr. Robert, you know, or Dr. Fox, you know. And so people, people identify you, right, like that. I'm so excited for my wife to get a PhD. She's, it's not in medicine, but it's a, it's a PhD, so people will call her Doctora Nereida, you know. And so I'm going to be like, yeah, you know. And it's like, what can you heal, you know. And I'm like, well, you know, that's a different story. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, a title usually identifies us, you know. It's like we go anywhere. And it's like, oh, he's, he's a deacon, you know, of Grace Bible Church. Oh, he's the worship uh, leader, you know, of Grace Bible Church. You know, or, or he is this and this. And usually our title is our reputation. But we have the opportunity in this time that wherever we go, if the people sees us, they will say, oh, because the way he is, the way he acts, the way he moves, he belongs to God. Who is his God? And, and, and I want to I wanna dig a little bit on this. And I, and I practice this, so I don't think it's going to work. Okay, so let's go to the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If I didn't say it well, I said it well, thank you so much. Thumbs up. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Osadrak, Mesach, Abednego, right? But for the purpose of this sermon, we're going to call them the three amigos, okay? <laughs> I didn't practice Nabucodonosor, so Nabucodonosor, something, yeah, okay. Okay. The king makes a statement, okay? The king makes a statement, and it's about a statue of gold. And he sends a message. And the, the message is basically everyone has to bow down, bow down and worship the statue. This is, this is a time where these people were taken from their land. You know the story. And if you know, don't know it, don't worry. We're going to read a lot. They are, they are taken from the land. And they are taken to a foreign country. And now they're in a place where they have influence. But... The king makes a very controversial, you know, uh, uh, he, he, he makes a statue and then everyone has to worship this statue. Let's go to, um, let's go to Daniel chapter 3, verse 4. I put some names of people that for me are history makers, you know, and so you can read it there. But let's, let's dig in the story because time is money. Well, not money, you know. Verse 4. Then a herald shouted, shouted out, people of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, cedar, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship the king gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey would immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Now, I don't know how many of you have been ever threatened, threatened you know, or how many of you have ever been conditioned to something, but this is not a pretty one, right? Let's think, you know, that we're here right now, and, and often the world, the politics, you know, try to influence God's people to do something that is completely against what we have been called. And many times we have to be radical in our actions, in our words, because the world will not stop trying to make us bow down before someone else than God. And this was a time where, believe me, I don't think, I don't think God's people was going to have peace with this, with this law. It's something that it, it was challenging the culture. It was challenging, you know, the, the, the way that these people live. It was challenging the way, you know, these people come together. It was challenging the beliefs. And, 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 it's, and there's going to be a time in our lives where we're just going to be challenged, you know. And don't think that it's something as big as this. Sometimes it's little things that can, if we make them negotiable, are just going to affect the eternity of our family. We're just going to change the way our family walks with the Lord. The culture will proclaim 
something that will be against what we're called to be as Christians. And let's just think about it. The world is just recovering from COVID-19. Some places are still completely destroyed, as are Guatemala. It's just a mess, not able to even get together like this. And the churches are struggling to survive because we weren't able to get together and to be with the saints. And, and the church had to adapt. It's great when you have great internet connection, not in Grace Bible Church Midtown, by the way, but it's great when you have, you know, internet connection and you can zoom in or you can, you know, Facebook Live and then the church adapt and the message never stop. Never. Even more. There were more people sharing the gospel than ever before, which is something to praise the Lord. We need the church. We need to come together. But it was incredible how in social media and just everywhere the church exploded and it was just a blessing to see others sharing the word. But we cannot go back to be comfortable because the world is constantly drifting away from God. So something very difficult come. If you come with me to Daniel chapter 3 verse 11, this decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. Now, it's been cold lately, but I don't want to be thrown to a, a blazing furnace, you know, no. But there are some Jews, and there's an accusation here. The world will constantly point you. You will be constantly point. You will be constantly, uh, oh man, I'm thinking of Spanish, señalado, you know. The world will constantly be, be, be putting the eyes on you. Because of the way you act, the way that we, that what we said that we are, you know. And so, but there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, feel good. Whom you put in charge of the providence, province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue that you have set up. Then Nabucadnezzar flew into a rage in order that the three amigos be brought before him. When they were brought in, the king said to them, Is it true, three amigos, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue you have set up? Now, I want you to know something. This is what I call, this is not profound theology or anything, okay? This is something that I have experienced. This is what I call a history maker opportunity. Okay? This is an opportunity that they had either to be obedient to what the world was saying or risk everything in following God. There's going to be moments in our lives where we're going to be challenged. And something that I love about Midtown is that it's constantly challenging our culture, our, our, the way we live, the way we're comfortable. Uh, we, we are constantly being challenged to be transcultural, to, to get to know other people from other nations, to get to know, you know, brothers and sisters that maybe have experienced God in a different way, but it's the same God. And it's just because in, in, in their culture, the way the Lord moves is different. We just learn from each other and we strengthen our faith. Now, this was a challenging moment for them. This was a history maker opportunity, verse 15. We will give you one more chance to bow down. Now, it's easy when you're by yourself, but when you have your family, when you're about to see your wife or husband struggle, I, I imagine that's completely different. Eyes on Jesus. I have made when you hear the sound of musical instrument, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then... And that, this is something that I love, when people challenge God's people and challenge God. What God will be able to rescue you from my power? The world will think that they have a greater power than the one we belong to. It's our responsibility to remember who do we belong. It's our responsibility to teach our people who do we belong. It's our call that others, as soon as they see us, they know who do we belong. 
for their refusal to obey the king's decree to bow down the idol, three charges were brought against them. They paid no heed to the king and his commands. They did not serve the king's God, and they refused to worship the golden statue the king himself has set up. The penalty for their actions was dead. dead. Their response to the king was very profound. The three friends replied, O king, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God who we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. That, but if not, to show that they did not presume to tie God to their deliverance, absolutely, for God is arbitrary and knows how to deliver and sometimes to suffer his saints to glory himself by suffering. It was therefore all one to them which way of the two God, of the two God will honor himself. They were resolved to venture suffering rather than sinning and leave the cause to God. Now this by itself is a, is, is a great message. I mean, just how bold they were in their statement to say, we will not bow down. Many of us to, today, we need to be bold in our decisions, bold in the way we're living. Maybe after we leave this place, we go back home and we do things that do not please God and that are preventing us from showing the Lord to others. Maybe we're acting in a way that is even a little unmoral, you know, and we constantly, we, we, we keep going in the same bump, hitting the same bump and the same bump and the same bump, and we need to be radical and say, no, I will not continue to do this because I belong to the Lord. I will not continue to bow down to this because I belong to the Lord. Many of us need to make a statement today. Many of us maybe just need to pray in the break room of our work. Maybe, of us, maybe many of us just need a sticker on a computer that says, I will follow Christ or I follow Christ. Many of us just need others to be able to see by the way we speak, who do we belong. And the verse 19, the king was so furious with the three friends that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace was heated seven times hotter than usual. And we're going to stop there. We're going to pause here because I want to go to the story of Daniel. Daniel had a similar situation. He served for years and he had a reputation with the king. There were people trying to set up, you know, to set him up so he can fail or he can commit something they had nothing against him and and they set him up so the king had no other option that basically condemned him to death if we see verse 6 and, and and if we go to chapter 6 we can see around verse 6 that the administrators and the high officers went to the king and said long live king darius we're all in agreement this is another king a little easier to say his name we administrators, office, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except for you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. Another moment where the world it's just challenging the way we live, the way we are supposed to live. Daniel, he heard this. He heard about this. And he, he probably was a little troubled too, you know. Verse 10, when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and kneeled down. But not before the idols, not before the king. 
He did it as usual. He's upstairs. But he did it in private. He did it in public. And that's something that I want you to pay attention. When the world is challenging us, sometimes we need to be public. We need to just let others know with our action, not debating, not going who's right, but with our actions, we prove others, we show to others who is our God. With the windows open toward Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day. So he, only, he not only did it once, he did it three times a day. Yes, as he had always done, giving thanks to the Lord. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. So let me ask you, church, what radical actions do we need to take and we need to set apart and we will reflect that Jesus is where we are? Again, maybe you need to pray your break room. Maybe you just need to, uh, with your family, you know, because maybe there's more conflict there. And one day they will just need to find you praying for your family. We tend to forget that God's still able and God still work this day and that God respond to his people. And so when this happened, uh, all these people, you know, the South Daniel, were Ran, you know, back to the king with a chismecito, with a, with a gossip, you know. They were gossiping. Hey, we went straight to the, to the king and reminded his law. Did you not sign a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone divine or human except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lion? Yes, said the king. And so that decision stands. And it's official law of the Medes and Persian that cannot be revoked. Then they told the king that man, that man, Daniel, one of the captives that Judah is ignoring your law, and he still prays to his God three times a day. Hearing this, the king was in deeply trouble, and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. Now, he was the king. He knew Daniel. He knew that he, they was, he was set up. And he tried to find a way. We're talking about the king. Now, I don't know how many times we try to use influence, you know. I don't know, I don't know that. I, I think that doesn't happen here, you know. But I used to go to my dad, right? Dad, can you make this, you know, for me? Can you give me for new shoes? You know, I don't know. You know, you always go to someone that has a little influence. Hey, you know, boss, uh, you know, this is not happening and I need help. We, we tend to go to someone with you influence. Now, Daniel didn't go to him. The king was troubled. And the king was trying to find a way to save him. And he couldn't because no law that the king signs can be changed. Now, I want you to think on this. Human efforts will not be enough. There's sometimes human efforts are not going to be enough. And there's an opportunity there to show others who is our God. And that's something that it has to it has to stick in our hearts because we trust more in our savings account that, that God is able to do a miracle. And I know, I know this, is, this is a little tough, you know, but it's a reality. Sometimes we trust more in our savings that the Lord is able to do a miracle. We try to, you know, trust more in our budgets that to see the providence of the Lord opening a way where there was no way. And that's something that Midtown, if, and, and that's why I, I, I ask you, get involved, you know, serve, get to know the people, listen to the stories. Not for Midtown to grow, we, we, that's, that will be great, but for you to grow in the Lord. Because when you hear the stories of your brothers and sisters, you will find people that are, as our Bible study says, experiencing God. People that through their testimony are just, it's just inevitable. You know, it's just incredible to see how the Lord is connecting things. Get involved. Get to know more people. Talk. Just, just be curious of what the Lord is doing. And I'm, I promise you, in areas that you're troubled in your life, you will see the testimonies of others. You'll be encouraged and you'll be able to say, 
<laughs> the way the Lord, you know, rescue him or, or save him, he will do in my life. And you will come together with your family and you will fight for your family and you will do what you need to do to show others who is our God. This was, there, there was nothing that human effort can do. Verse 15, in the evening, the men went together to the, gate, to the king and said, Your majesty, you know that according to the Lord, you know, there's nothing that can be done. Verse 16, so the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested. He was troubled, church. He knew that there was injustice happening, but there was nothing he can do. He was going to be thrown in the den of lions. And the, but this is something incredible. And this is what I'm telling you. What are our actions doing? So others, the first thing they see is, oh, he is the way he is. She is the way he is. Not because he's super smart, he's super intelligent. It's because it's his God. Because the, the, the king said to him, may your God. He didn't say may your speed save you. You know, running away from the lions. You know, it was more, may your God whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. This was coming from a king, a foreign king. But because of Daniel's action, he knew and he hoped. The stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den and the king sealed it. The king sealed it. Now, I'm going to make another pause there because we have two Inconclusive, inconclusive stories. We have the three friends. I like the three amigos, right? There's a movie like that. The three amigos. We have the three amigos who were ready to be put in the, uh, I'm going to call the oven, you know? They were ready. They were ready for that. And this is the moment when we can make his story. If we see the story of the three friends, and we see the story of Daniel. We know that nothing happened, right? We know that nothing at the end happened to the three friends. On the verse 28 of chapter 3, it says, The king Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent an angel to rescue his servant who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. When Daniel, we go back to Daniel, on verse 6. We see that the huge rock was taken and then... Daniel was sitting there with the lions, probably petting them, you know. And then it says, peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. Remember how at the beginning of this message, the people decreed that everyone should bow down before the statue because of their actions. Because of the actions of the three friends, the actions of Daniel. A whole nation, a whole nation got to know who was the true and living God. Verse 26, again, I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel for who is the living God, and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never be end. He rescues and saves his people. He performed miraculous signs and wonder in the heavens and air, and he rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. With the three amigos. With the three friends, it was similar, and I just lost it. We have the opportunity, church, to be history makers. At the end, with the three friends, and they came out of the oven, you know, the, the huge oven, the furnace. 
when the king saw that there was another person, he decreed also, he sent a message to everyone that there was no other God like the God of those three men. Now, church, what are we doing in our actions to represent Christ? What are we doing in our daily activities that other people will see us and say, hey, he has something different. What's the difference? Why, why when everyone are so negative, when everyone are without hope, what, what's going on with, with this person? Why, why is there something different? Sometimes you will need to express it and you can give testimony. You can witness to others. But some, some other times people will see you and they will say, oh, he prays? And he says that he goes to church? And we had the same situation, but he responds differently. Why? And I want to give you two takeaways this morning. Let people look at you and say, the God that he worships is the true God. This is something that is challenging you, church. Because that means that we're not only the church on Sundays. This means that we are the church every day. In every moment. In everything that we do. When people connect with you, they will, they will see that there's something different. And they will, they will want to talk to you. And sometimes you, you might be like, ah, oh, you know, not today. I mean, yeah, the Aggies won yesterday, but the season was terrible. I mean, whatever, you know. But every day if we have, if we have the hunger to connect with others, to show others who our God is, believe me, you will make a difference because you are giving a testimony to others of who God is. And the other thing is, what is something that only God can do in our lives, in our church, that human effort can do? I'm telling you this because when we see the life of these men, we see the challenge and we see everything that they face. And the victory is amazing, right? But because of the disposition they have in their life to put themselves in a position when they will probably lose everything, they not only conquer in the situation, but a but nation saw who God was, who was the true God. So... Maybe this morning you are struggling with something. Maybe this morning you are struggling with a step that you need to take. It can be serving here. It can be a sickness. It can be an illness. It can be maybe something that is completely lost in your life. Maybe something in your family. In what areas do we need others to see the God that we have? Are we representing Christ in everything that we do? 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Through whom? Us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. Church, we have the opportunity this morning to bring others back to Christ. And we are called to make his story. We're called to be his story makers so others will see his story in us and will follow him. I want to pray for you in something. I, I want to ask you just, this is, this is a, a, a personal prayer and it's, and it's something that, that the Lord has been challenging, especially when, when we get to be in staff. It's easy to think you know that it's because you are in church in staff or you are serving as a lay leader capacity that because you are in a position you have to be more holier or more close to God but this is this is a prayer that I have Lord I have been focusing on building myself a name a reputation even a reputation for being a good Christian but you have already built a name for yourself the great I am and I will focus more on glorifying your name so church there's many things that we can learn from this 
passage of the scripture. But I want to ask you to think on something. Are we representing Christ in everything that we do? Are we representing Christ as we get into a room? If we're not doing it, it's maybe because we are too focused on just be a good Christian or being a good instrument player or being excellent professional. How does the people know us? Have you invited others to get to know Christ? I'm not going to say to church, but to get to know Christ? Does the people in your work knows you as a people of God, someone who belongs to God? Or they know you as a good Christian? But there's a huge difference in just being a good Christian and being actively putting yourself in a position where others will see he belongs to Christ. Let me pray for you. Father, just grateful for the opportunity of being in this morning together. We know that we've been challenged lately to just go out of our comfort zone. And Father, this message is, is a message that just reminds us that, yeah, we might go to struggle that we might go to different circumstances. But Father, that even when there's victory, at the end of the day, every people, nation, everyone will see that the victory comes from you. And I wanna, I wanna ask you something. As we just spend a week in Thanksgiving, everything that you gave thanks in your uh, Thanksgiving dinner, can you, start, can you start just putting it before the Lord and say, Father, I'm grateful for my family, grateful for my job, grateful for even whatever you said at the Thanksgiving dinner. Can you give him the glory for who you are, what you have, and who you have around you? Let's take a moment for that. Father, everything that we are is yours. We live to glorify you, Lord. As we sing before, we make room to you, Father, so you can take everything from us. Father, if you are calling some of us to serve you in any capacity, and we are doubting about it, Father, that we may notice that we're called to serve you in every area of our lives, every time. Father, thank you for the church, thank you for every sister, every brother, Father. Thank you for the opportunity of just proving others who the true God is. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have in store for us as a church. Let's sing together to wrap this time. Let's glorify the Lord with our actions, church.